Today, we are going to be doing a full body training session using the exercise ball. So grab your ball. We are gonna start with uh, just getting ourselves connected with the ball, seated. There is a little guideline for the size of ball based on your height. And if you ever wonder if your ball is too big, too small, it's a simple thing to Google or a frame of reference would be if you sit on the ball and your hips um, are about in line with the knee, then your ball is sized appropriately for you, right? That doesn't mean you can't use a bigger or smaller ball. It just means that it's the most ideal size. So we're just bouncing, belly to spine, get your good stature about yourself, right? When you come into the down, this is really important. Because the down is this like force driven, it's really important that you don't let your tailbone and the sacrum kind of roll under into a C curve. So put those, that imaginary like, you know, boning through the ribs all the way down to the hip bones, like your rods are keeping your body really strong. And now in, if you feel like everything's going along nicely, can you raise the heels while you're in your up? What are your knees doing? Are they going in and out? Like, or can you make them just stay in line with the hips? And if everything still feels good, keep pulling your belly in. Maybe you're able to get a little heel lift completely, all right? Get those feet off the floor if you can. This is when you wanna really tighten up through your navel to spine and 10, keep the tension out of your neck and shoulders. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, start calming down. <sighs> when the when you're pressing into the ball, if you feel the ball hitting your calves and then pulling away and hitting the calves and pulling away, then that is a, a very good indicator that you were not maintaining S sit position. Because if you go into C curve, that's when the ball drives forward and presses into your leg. But if you push the hips back and maintain S sit, there should be no contact with the ball and the backs of your calves. So now your march can be done super slow. It could be done really fast, right? Let's do a little fast. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and cut. And then give me this little extension push. Maybe you're not able to get your foot off the floor without your body getting into this little squirrely position. Even the squirrely action here, because we're not in impact mode and we're kind of in C curve, if your leg and your hips are like all squirrely, chances are is that your body lost the command mind to muscle and you're in C curve versus S curve. So in the event you can't get your foot off the floor, just extend the leg, keep the heel to the floor and focus on that. It's gonna feel, you won't know that you're doing anything like that feels weird because it'll be new to you. But this lengthening the leg here feels, it, it feels weird to me because my skill is that I can do a little bit more. Here we go, five, four. You're going to try to get to holding position right now, hold. The taller you make your body, the better it should feel. Switch, push. Maybe on one side, you nailed it. And now when you go to leg number two, it's like you're using somebody else's parts. Relax your body, a little bit of C curve. Reestablish your good clean sit belly to spine, chin is drawn back, shoulders out of the ears, push this down arm. I'm not resting on the ball. I'm letting this arm track back just a little bit like someone's pulling my pinky and my high reaching arm is as if someone's got my wrist and I'm like being tugged on, switch. 
stick it right there. Sit up tall, belly to spine, shoulders down, ribs locked down. Wow. One more time. Switch. And I don't mean just one more time. I meant one more time to each side. Switch, push, and release. Good. How about our little stir the pots? Right? So you decide how full you want your circle to be. And since we didn't put our mat down, we are going to need to put our mat down. If you put your mat down already, you are a step ahead of me. But not having the mat down is like making my feet work a little bit harder to keep my my bearings here push the more your hips create this bigger circle like the rest of the body has to figure out how does it stay engaged right i'm letting my arms work around because this is all when the ball is coming around because of my my super big circle and my reclining of the shoulders while my hips drive the ball forward. It's all oblique work. Okay. So now get yourself ready, rewind, and maybe you start really small circles, right? And then you're like, everything feels good. I'm in charge, right? Bigger circle. And then you finally let go of your knees and you're like free to roam. Ugh. Don't rush through the part of the movement that's the sticking part that your body is going, I'm really fighting, fighting, fighting for control because that's the part where the real work is done, right? So think about that. Sometimes we rush through the hardest part just to get out of it. But, and that's the part that I gear myself to stay in because that's when the muscles are really being challenged. Let's do about two or three more. Now, if you've got anything wonky going on in your back and you have that inkling that this is no good for you, then your circles should have gone back to really small circles. Do one more, right? It's not about not doing something. It's about being very tuned in to a sensory awareness that your body gives you. Put your mat down. It is so um, easy for me to like turn any accessory into an hour long workout. <laughs> so we're going to try, I'm going to try my hardest to um, cut this down to 20 minutes. All right. So now your knees do not hit the floor, but I want you to spread your legs, let your body like offset that step so that you can get down and on your mat. Your hands, we're gonna position ourselves so that our feet off the floor. I'm just, if you're looking in at the screen and you're like watching me do like this giant leg raise, that's only to get my body what, feeling like it's properly on the ball. So the legs are out, nice stiff legs, and I want you to flutter kick. And if your wrists are saying, oh gosh, like I've got pain in my wrists, two things to consider. Where there is restriction, right? So the ability of that joint to flex, right, right at that, the bones right before the hand, right, that's the restricted part, and maybe one side of your body is tighter than the other, you can always make a fist, put those knuckles into the floor, don't let the wrist buckle, I, this is a funny thing, and I don't know if it's going to show up on screen or not, and your legs are just going, why are our legs just going, because these muscles in your buns, they are endurance muscles. So just keep the legs kicking. If you opt for knuckles down, then you have to commit to the knuckle. You can't go knuckles down and then let the hand flex or the wrist flex with your knuckles tucked under you. I mean, that's even worse than being flat palmed. So commit to it, palms are turned in and now stop. Push the body back, 
push. Take your stretch, let the toes touch, glide your shoulders out of your ears and you'll feel your whole shoulder girdle kind of just move. And when it gets to the point where you can't glide it anymore, that's when I want you to drive your hands into the floor and pull using your shoulder blades, your it's your lats actually, you're pulling your body back into your structured position. So this is very gentle and it's a small movement. Let the body glide without collapsing. The feet touch the floor, your arms are in this long extension and here's what the visual of a collapsing would look like. If you go too far and your body draws down, that's what I consider collapsed. So let's get you to your initial prop. It's a must do. Shoulders track away from your jaw. Hands bear down into the floor. Pull yourself to a stacked body line. Glide back. And now I'm gonna stop looking at the screen. Hopefully you're looking at the mat without letting your head hang. So give yourself some good prop. You're in pause mode, squeeze your buns, drive the knuckles into the floor, slide the shoulders away from the jaw, slide your body forward, do one more. It's like, what is this working? Shoulder depressors are hard at work and your lats are working, right? Your triceps are working because you're in propped up position. Glide back and let yourself relax. If your hands are sensitive, just take a few seconds, roll your fingers around, move your wrists back and forth. Okay, ready? Giant stride. Hold on to your ball, pick your leg. Which leg do you have the best odds of bearing into using your ball and helping yourself up? Whew. I want you to think light dumbbells, tricep extensions on the ball. So I'm gonna grab my, well, I'm gonna grab my eights because I don't have fives and I know uh, that I can do eights. But um, if you've got threes or fives, threes might be too light, fives might be too heavy, I don't know. So here we go. You wanna start your ball so that when you walk forward, your feet don't end up off your mat. Start your ball towards one end of the mat, sit on it. Think overhead triceps. Imagine doing overhead triceps laying on the floor. The only difference is that you're laying on the ball, which means that your hamstrings and glutes are gonna get worked. Pull the uh, weight to your body, go into your C curve, walk down your runway, lean back. Abs just worked for you there. Keep walking yourself out until you feel like your neck and upper shoulders are comfortably supported. You'll know that you walked out too far, right? If your chin is being pushed into the chest, there is a happy medium. Lift the derriere, squeeze the belly to the spine, push your arms up. And if you have your head turned and you're looking at the screen, bring your head back to neutral. So you're looking up at your weights, bend your arms, push the weights to the ceiling. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you putting your dumbbells to touch each other and then bending the arms and gently letting the dumbbells touch the crown of your head, right? Push, squeeze the buns, push. So in the event you've picked a little bit of a heavier weight, putting your dumbbells to touch actually will give you better control than if they're free and if the dumbbells are free, then I want you to try to lower the bells, clearing your face, aiming for your ears. Don't lose sight of getting your butt lifted nice and high. You should feel your derriere fired up. The heels are right under your knee line. You've got about five more. Inhale down. 
And if you've overcommitted yourself, then just set the weights down and walk yourself back and relax. Give me two more. Inhale on the bend, exhale on the push, inhale, bend, drive it up. And now pull your weights to your body, move the feet a little bit. And as you start moving the feet back, pick your head up off the ball. Before you do a powerful walk back, offload the weights to the floor. No sense in straining yourself. Belly, pull it in, spine rounded. Don't get hung up here where you keep pulling your feet back, but you don't, you're not rolling up. Drive the hips into the ball. Ah, good. Okay. So bring yourself to your standing position. You can just roll your dumbbell out of the way. Okay. Now, real quick. Okay. Got your ball in hand, feet are moving, bouncing ball. I want you to set yourself up in your space so that you're like, okay, where's my dumbbell? Where's my sofa? Can I move right to left, front to back a little bit? My feet are just in a very large, um, light march. And with this alternating arm, I just want you to start taking these little side steps and then move away and then move forward and then move to the side. Think about tracing the lines of a ball, uh, a square. Walk yourself back, go to the side, pause. Not with the, not, you're pausing, you're moving, you're just keeping your ball going. Go to the side, we're, we're tracing the square the other way. Go forward, go to the side, pull it back, and now hold the ball. I'm gonna face you for this one and I hope that it comes up on the screen, okay? So there is this, this is our last one. There is a slight disconnect when we add an accessory. This is your movement, side steps, and you're only gonna do about three or four, maybe five, I don't, to each, in each direction. What you're gonna try to do this is the primal movement pattern. When one foot is stepping, that leg moves, it's the opposite hand that's gonna connect with the ball, right? So that may or may not make sense, but if you can, you wanna be putting, right? Opposite hand touching the ball to the foot that lifts Right, and maybe you pause and go, what, how do I do that? Step, 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 pause, go the other direction. This is your last one, step, step, and relax. There is so much more we can do with the ball, right? But our time's over. This walk, this karaoke step, right? Where you do walking crossover step. This can also be done opposite hand. Like our, our, our options, are just whatever we can concoct. Now, that is a very quick full body training with the ball. So I'm gonna sign off with you and I hope you uh, enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Mm.